The end. The Golden State Warriors have been a championship pedigree team dating all the way back to 2015. There has been a ton of ups and downs as this dynasty began. We witnessed Steph, Clay, and Draymond conquer LeBron and the Cavs in 2015. And just one year later, they made NBA history by falling to the Cavaliers after having a 3-1 lead in the NBA Finals. A tearful FaceTime call later, KD would join forces with the Big 3 in the Bay and have a record-setting season and win back-to-back -back NBA titles. Even after Kevin's departure, the Warriors still won a championship in 2022. So now, you might ask yourself, what went wrong exactly? Well, it starts here. The chemistry was never the same from that point on, but I don't believe that was the only issue. The Warriors' serious lack of depth and defense hurt them in the long run. And in the first time in a very long time, we saw Steph look human. Steph Curry is just not enough to carry a team to a championship anymore, especially without his co-star Clay, who has had numerous career-ending injuries almost, but managed to bounce back. But he's just not the same guy anymore, especially on the defensive end where he thrived the most. With your championship core being with Steph at 35, Clay at 33, and Draymond at 33, how much time do you think this roster has left to achieve another championship? I understand that Steph Curry is great. He is a top two, top three point guard of all time at this point. But I think it was a major mistake for the Golden State Warriors to keep this core together. Of course, it's impossible to keep Poole and keep Draymond. But at this point in both their careers, Poole has tremendously more upside. And I think you could have gotten a fair match for Draymond out in the market. But I understand Draymond has done a lot for this team. Draymond deserves to stay. And we don't know how Steph or Clay would have reacted to Draymond being traded. So it is what it is now. So you ship Jordan Poole away and then you get Chris Paul in return. So Chris Paul, of course, probably going to end up coming off the bench and helping out that second unit. And their offense, I don't know how much Chris Paul can be provided on defense at this stage in his career, or even if he can stay healthy for the most part. So does this really address any of the glaring holes in the Warriors roster? What you guys desperately needed was a big man, defense, and some quality role players coming off the bench. The young guys you guys picked just need a lot more developing, and that timeline just does not match up with Clay, Steph, and Draymond. We saw in that Lakers series the absolute lack of supporting cast that Steph has especially when it came to clay clay was shooting atrocious for almost the entirety of the season and also going into the playoffs honestly you would think that dante divincenzo was the second best player on that warrior squad andrew wiggins missed the regular season and came back in the playoffs completely rusty and not able to contribute we think that this same roster can run it back with dario Saric and chris paul and have a different outcome is this a better squad than what they had before? Is Chris Paul at this point better than Jordan Poole? Is Dario Sarge a difference maker really on this squad? I know he's a decent three-point shooter. He can space the floor out a little bit. He can grab rebounds. He's a big body. But is this going to be your starting center? Last season, he averaged only 14 minutes a game with six points. He's played for the Philadelphia 76ers, the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Phoenix Suns, and the Thunder. That's four or five teams in the last eight years that he's been in the league. This is a flyer minimum contract type of guy. You might as well have just kept JaVel McGee. So my 2023-2024 season predictions for this Golden State Warriors team is they're probably never going to be a top six seed. It wouldn't surprise me to see this team in another play-in. Because let's really think about it. Are they better than the Suns? No. Are they better than the Lakers? No. Are they better than the Clippers? Maybe. Maybe not. Do you think they'll be seated higher than John Morant and the Grizzlies? Probably not. I still believe that Steph Curry is still the best point guard in the game currently, but I just don't think this roster around him is enough to win at this point in his career. So let's say they're in the play-in and they make another second round exit, first round exit, or even worse, they don't make the play-in at all. Where do you go from there? Is this young core of Kaminga really something you want to stick with? Are they good enough to carry this dynasty into the next generation? Luckily, the Warriors own all their picks up until 2030, so there is potential to rebuild, but it's going to be some dark, dark Orlando Magic type 
dark times for the Warriors after this year. Because there's also nothing you can really do during the season to help this team out. This is the most expensive team in basketball right now. So you would have to do a sign and trade with your guys with very big contracts like Draymond, Wiggins, or Clay, And those guys have done so much for his organization, except maybe Wiggins, since he hasn't been there since the beginning, that if you trade them, that might do irreversible damage to the locker room. But to be successful and keep building upon this dynasty, you're going to have to be the bad guy. And that may mean trading Clay, trading Draymond, or letting either of those two walk. And with this new CBA, expiring contracts are so valuable. I know these guys signed extensions, but we're thinking two, three years down the road, some guys are going to be on the move. Jalen Brown, or maybe Zach Levine. How much better would that make your roster? I'll tell you what won't make your roster better, and that's Chris Paul. Chris Paul has not been healthy throughout an entire playoff run in his entire career. And I understand Poole didn't show up in last year's playoffs or, you know, a lot of the regular season either. But with this new role in Washington, I believe that the Warriors are going to regret trading him. If you're still here, I know you're a real NBA fan and love talking hoops. So hit that subscribe button, like, leave a comment. I'll respond to everybody and let's talk basketball. Because I just don't believe Poole really could benefit from a situation where he was not allowed to make mistakes. The Warriors were in a win now mindset and we would see Poole, you know, size up, do his dribble moves, pull up to a shot and miss horribly. But when it would go in, you would see the flashes of greatness. And this isn't a Jordan Poole praise video. I just don't believe you got equal value for what you traded for. Chris Paul is not going to be able to help this team achieve anything outside of maybe a first or second round exit in the playoffs. But you tell me what you think. Do you like the new additions? Do you like CP? Do you like Dario Sarge? Do you think moving Poole and keeping Draymond was a good idea? 